Heart of the Lion Ministries, this is Evangelist Christian back with you again. Glad and happy to be back with you to do another full-blown full blown message, as you've seen a lot of my, my a lot of smaller clips that I do, the Bible Minutes. But this is uh, my, my next full-blown message that I haven't done in around probably over a month. And um, I am going to get straight into this because you know how I can be. <laughs> I can talk a lot. And so I labeled this message, Closing the Gates of Hell. Thank you for everyone joining. This will be eventually saved uh, later for everyone to watch. So bless you, those who are joining. Bless those who share it, uh, if you feel led to share. But this will be recorded and uh, posted uh, on my, my link here or on my, uh, my page. So I labeled this, Closing the Gates of Hell. And this is actually going to be a series of probably two to three messages. I don't know about four, maybe four, along the lines of this book right here, uh, Closing the Gates of Hell by Dale Sides. I would highly suggest buying this if you can. It's not expensive at all, and I don't get anything from that. This is a ministry out of the East Coast of the United States. His name is Dale Sides Liberating Ministries. He has an excellent series of books that you will see later on uh, that go along with what I'm calling the spiritual warfare season as I'm trying to equip the body of Christ to pick up their mantle of warfare to bring down the powers of darkness and to loosen the kingdom of heaven. So. I'm going to get straight into this, and what I want to do is show you how there is a blueprint. I mean, there's a lot in the scriptures, uh, but there is a blueprint that is confirmed in the Old... We're going to start in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah, if you want to follow. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. Uh, you don't, you could just start right there in the beginning of the book. If you're not following, no problem. You're going to hear my voice, and you're going to hear what I'm saying. But the book of Jeremiah and the book of Matthew confirm a spiritual warfare blueprint that will allow you to not be dormant any longer or a punching bag or a mat for the devil so that you can effectively, through your weapons of war th warfare, through Christ Yeshua, pull down the powers of hell that have been assigned against every man. Uh, yeah, mankind really and that's why Christ died on the cross to liberate man all of mankind however it's not activated until you take the keys put it in the car and turn it and ask forgiveness uh, for your salvation and so let's go straight into this the book of Jeremiah obviously he's a prophet Jeremiah is a powerful prophet and uh, he was alive in the time of Israel's rebellion unfortunately the Old Testament church more times was more in rebellion than obedience, even though there was a lot of obedience um, through the scriptures and other people uh, like King David and Elijah and uh, Moses. But we see the contest of uh, division and the warfare within it, just trying to obey. And we're going to see that right here. So let's go straight into the book of Jeremiah. It's only 19 verses. I'm going to leave some out because I want you to read it yourself and for time's sake also, so I don't make this into an hour video, even though there's nothing wrong with that, but I like to keep them around a half hour, no more than 40 minutes. Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Je Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah in the thirteenth year of his reign. It also was in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the first month. So Jeremiah is a prophet to those who are in rebellion and being taken away captive because of their rebellion against God. And the reason why they mention these lineages, especially is with the kings, is believe it or not, even though we don't really see that today, maybe it's starting to a little bit happen. It was never designed for government to operate separate of the prophetic mantle. So they're always explaining who was king or governor or in charge 
uh, at that time because normally the prophets would be summoned or they would be sought after for revelation and insight of what to do in governing, kinging affairs, whether it was a war, number one, which most of them were doing, or how to, to govern the people in society. So normally prophets were with the leaders of that time, like King David had a prophet. I don't think it was, maybe it was Nathan, I believe. I'd have to look to confirm, but I think it was Prophet Nathan. Anyhow, the ones who were in obedience had prophets who were in that governing system that Moses didn't quite have yet because of uh, he was kind of starting the kingdom of, uh, of Israel. So anyhow, I don't know if it's, uh, it's not a big deal. I see a line in my phone. I don't know if you guys see it or not. I don't know what's going on, but you could still see me recording, so it's no big deal. So that's that. Let's go into verse 4, because here is the template of spiritual warfare that is confirmed, and then it's further confirmed with Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as he is explaining it in Matthew. Verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, uh, came to him, saying, and now verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And the temptation here is just to just look at, wow, he's called as a prophet, which is amazing and a huge honor. I get that. But there's a lot loaded here, so I'm going to actually speak of these things. Um, I'm actually going to speak of these things as I'm getting to my point. What God is saying here is, I made sure that you would be a prophet and I'm not trying to get to the Arminianism and Calvinism, but I am going to explain the mystery of that because they're both true. And those are for that's for theological buffs. I don't want to explain to real. I don't have time really to explain what that means. But there is a debate in the Christian realm about free will and predestination. And what God is saying here is both: is through your free will, Prophet Jeremiah through your free will acts and desires because God doesn't force anyone to do anything. He doesn't make them robots, but he can make them thirsty and desiring for something. He said, through your free will acts, I have destined you to fulfill your destiny as a prophet to the nations. And he says that that happened before Jeremiah even came into an existence before he was a twinkle in his father and mother's eye. He says, I have done that, so be at peace. I am in control. I've ordained you a prophet to the nations, but in verse six it says, Jeremiah, ah oh God, I cannot speak for I am a youth. I can't, I can't do this, I'm too young. And God says in verse seven, don't say that. Why does he say that? Because words have power legal power for the angels of God to work for you or the fallen angels of the devil to work against you. So this, God's not just saying this because he's wrong, because he is wrong. God, with God, everything is possible. He's not only saying it because of that. What he is saying is actually, in a polite way, Jeremiah, shut up before you start working against your own life. Because your words in power, legally, in the spirit realm, demons, fallen angels, or the angelic, heavenly. So God is saying, don't say that, number one, or you're going to work against yourself. Believe and say what I have said to you. Believe what I've destined to you. Start speaking and saying that. And God says in verse 7, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go... To everyone that I send you, and whatever I command you, you will speak. And this is why he says in verse 8, Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord of hosts. So, he's already encouraging him that he's going to be tempted to fear because of the magnitude of the level of the message that he has. And the next verses are the nitty gritty, but I'm just giving you everything in context. He's saying, do not fear because you're going to be in fear because of the level of the word that I have for you is severe and they're going to get offended. 
because Israel was, when they were backsliding, basically if you read the whole thing, which is 53 chapters, and I think a main key chapter is chapter 7, is God said to them, he was putting them on trial. He said, you think you're delivered to do all these things, to kill, murder, steal, to treat your neighbor wrong? And that was the, one of the number ones with all of these other wicked sins that are evil. He said, the other one that he mentioned is, I want you to execute justice and righteousness with your neighbor. They were defrauding each other, cheating each other, lying, stealing from each other. The, the sin of the nation was so deep, when they heard the truth, the automatic response was not necessarily repentance and saying, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. It was the demonic. They didn't repent, so they allowed the demonic to respond through them, which would lead to, the, to them attacking Jeremiah. That's why he had to strengthen Jeremiah, because he knew he was going to get retaliation. And I want to say something quickly before we get into verses 9, which are the main verses before I get to the New Testament. There are some ministries, and I'm not going to name them, uh, because I believe 99% of other things that they teach. There are some ministries that are extreme that say that you are in the wrong if you get retaliation and spiritual warfare. That is wrong and not true, uh, because as we're going to read here, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And we're going to read here in the next verses that when you're in obedience, like Jesus Christ's life, Yeshua, <laughs> when you're in obedience, actually, a sign is retaliation and war against you. That's why in Matthew it also says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Violence. When you're in obedience and you're moving forward, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of darkness is going to attack you even when you're in full obedience doing it correctly. So I want to clarify a misunderstanding. Some ministries teach that if there's any, any, any resistance that you're doing it wrong. That's not true. That can be true in some situations, but that's not true 100% of the time. Ask Job. Ask Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And many, many others, like King David. Yes, there was sometimes some things they did to trigger the attack themselves. That's what we need to be careful from. Yes, that's true. But when you're in obedience to God, when you're in complete, you're right on track, you're going to still get attacked. And listen what he talks to Jeremiah. He says, you're going to get attacked, but they're not going to prevail against you. They're going to fight against you, is what God says to him. They're going to actually fight against you as a sign that I'm with you. So let's go to verse 9. This is the crux of this scripture before I get to the New Testament in Matthew in closing the gates of hell. Verse 9. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, Jeremiah's mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set this day set you over this day and the nations. Let me read that again, verse 10. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. How is God using Jeremiah? He is a prototype of the church of Christ because not everyone who is a prophet is called to how do you say this? Just because not everyone is called to be a prophet doesn't mean that we don't do the same works of a prophet, just like an evangelist. You may not be an evangelist, but we're called to do the work of an evangelist anyways, whether you're gifted in it or not. This is a template for the Old and New Testament body of Christ. I have this day set you over the nations and kingdoms to root out and pull down. What does that mean? root out, pull down, is destroying and leveling the kingdom of darkness. To destroy and throw down. And then it says to build and to plant. So before I get into that order, what did he say right before that? I called you to root out, pull down. What did he say to him? 
I put my words in your mouth. My words in your mouth. So how is Jeremiah going to do it? Even though they were physically involved in some of the governments at that time, and like I said today, the prophets aren't really. A little bit. Maybe starting to, finally. But not much. But for the most part, God's not saying it's the sword. It's the word in your mouth that pulls down, roots out, and builds the offense. There's the defense for the sports people. There's the defense to pulling down and the destruction, but then there's the building, and we see it's the mouth, the prayer, the decree, and what did he rebuke Jeremiah and told him to shut up? Because he wasn't talking along with the Holy Spirit about fulfilling his destiny. It's our words, our prayers, our decrees through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit, what he's saying us, that pierces the darkness in the atmosphere and closes the gates of hell, pulls down thrones, pulls down kingdoms. And that's the order of how it's done, which brings me to the next message. This is the Old Testament template. Root out, pull down, and then build. Like we're going to read in the New Testament, I've called you to bind and loose, which is the pull down, the bind. And to loosen is to build. But before I get there, well, that's that. I'll explain a little more in a second. But this is the Old Testament template. I've called you to level the playing field. Oh, that's what I'm about to say. This is a big problem to the church. And this is something God wanted me to share with the body of Christ. The big mistake the body of Christ and the church has made is they haven't rooted out and pulled down and built. The big mistake of the church and the body of Christ is in some ways being ignorant, which isn't necessarily a sin. You just don't know what the Word says or how to activate the Word of God. Uh, partially ignorance, but partially just not knowing how to swing your sword. How to swing your sword in prayer is that the church has been building parallel with the kingdoms of darkness, is what I'm saying without pulling and bringing them down. The church's mandate is to pull down what doesn't line up with the scriptures in our lives first, and then society. We have a governmental jurisdiction where God has placed your feet. Like Joshua, he said, I, wherever you place your feet, I will give you that land. We have jurisdictional authority once we've got our own houses in order, our own lives, doing things correctly, right, holy, pure, with God, to affect the atmosphere, the cities around us. And what the church did, instead of doing that and using their authority in prayer, in prophetic decree, through their words, that the angels and the Holy Spirit would back up, instead of doing that, they've built parallel, trying to be at peace with demonic laws of homosexuality, marriage, uh, abortion, and if they're not laws, just new standards of acceptance instead of pulling down these things and then building, which is loosening the kingdom of heaven on earth. So that's the Old Testament example. I'm already running out of time with 10 minutes left. But I'm not going to read the next verses, but I'm going to pick up in verse 17 because you have to have the proper context before I move on to the New Testament example of closing the gates of hell. In verse 17, before we get there, he has a vision of enemies coming from the north and taking over Israel and wiping them out. Now we're in verse 17 after that vision. Therefore, Jeremiah, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces. What does that mean in most verses? Do not fear their faces because they're going to look at you dirty. They're going to look at you with a bad look. They don't like you. Do not be afraid or do not be dismayed before their faces lest I dismay you before them. 
unless God does that to him and make him fear and, and look, uh, basically don't fear unless you want to look stupid before them is another way to look at it. But God's saying don't fear because you're going to be tempted to fear because they're going to fight against you. Verse 18, behold, I have made you this day, Jeremiah, a fortified city all by himself with God. One man, one prophet. I have made you a city, an iron pillar, and a bronze walls against how sad. It doesn't say the, the worldly kingdoms. It should. I have made you a fortified one-man army of destruction against the sin, the evil, the compromise, the mixture of Judah, Israel, and all of its princes and priests. I have made you a warrior, Jeremiah, against, unfortunately, your own people who are in rebellion against God. But God says, I have made you so strong, you're going to be like an iron city that no one can penetrate. But it says they will try, in verse 19, they'll try as a sign that he is sent from God. They're going to fight you. Jeremiah. Your own people are going to fight you. Verse 19, they will fight against you, Jeremiah, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, saith the Lord, to deliver you. And that's further confirmation that when you are in your walk and calling, it's not only easy, easy road, it, you will be attacked and the devil will fight you. When you are in line, praying correctly, doing correctly what God has called you to do. So that's the Old Testament example we're going to see in Matthew how it is confirmed by the words of Jesus Christ himself, Yeshua. And before I get there, once again in Matthew 11, it says the kingdom of heaven suffers violent, but the violent take it by force. What does that mean? The ones who are really God's people are going to rise up as soldiers. They're not going to sit down. They're not going to be lazy with their words and their prayers. They're going to be targeting and asking God, what do you want to target to bring down today in prayer? Through prophetic decree, through scriptures that line up with that. And then God will show you what do you want to lose? How do you want to build? What spirits do you want to lose? Righteousness, uh, holiness, anti-corruption, health, healing, whatever that may be, how it might look in your situation, in your life, and in your city, in your neighborhood. But now turn to Matthew 16 as I wrap this up. Matthew 16 is the New Testament confirmation of the blueprint of spiritual warfare, of closing the gates of hell, and it is even more specific, talking about the gates of hell and here in Matthew 16 he's talking to Peter the rock that he calls even though he denied him three times he was restored and uh, you know God still used him obviously very powerfully and um, here in Matthew 16 18 these are the New Testament scriptures that will confirm what we just read in Jeremiah chapter 1 and I say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell, Hades, shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. And then in verse 20, I'm not going to talk about that too much. Just for context, it says, Then he commanded the disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. That just talks about timing. Timing, we're not always called to say everything that we feel immediately. You have to use control of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and right in that situation, they said, "Don't." G Yeshua said, don't, don't say anything quite yet until I let you. But right here, it says... It's not that Peter is the Pope and the only person that can build the church. He's saying, I'm starting with you, Peter, because Yeshua is the real rock, not Peter. It's Yeshua in him. 
And he says, with you, Peter, I'm going to start. And on this rock, which is Christ in Peter, I will build this church, and the gates of hell and Hades will not prevail against it. I want, to, want you to notice something very clear here. This isn't the church hiding behind their own gate. What Christ is saying, what Yeshua is saying is, when I call you forward to attack the kingdom of darkness, their gates will not hold up against your attack of prayer, of prophetic decree, of prophesying, along with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, as the Holy Spirit is leading you in unction, whether it's normal words you understand or maybe the gift of tongues, singing in tongues, speaking in tongues, however it might look. In a church setting, you don't do that unless there's an interpreter. But by yourself, that's a prayer language to God that is, is not capable of being interpreted because half the time it's the tongues of angels, which you will confirm if you read, and the other half it's another language in the world. But the, the, the context is not the church protecting themselves from the devil. The context is the devil will not be able to protect himself and the gates will not prevail, which means what? It doesn't mean that the gates just don't work. It means the gates are shut, closed, broken down. So God's people, the Holy Spirit, the angels of God could go in, bind the powers of darkness, the demons, send them to the abyss and pull down, which will result in the pulling down of structures. Because when you bind and take the authority you have of whatever is backing any evil in the land, anything, whether it's laws, sins, whatever, it loses its strength, its power, and it starts crumbling. And that's what we get into the next verse, in verse 19. What does that mean? that the gates don't prevail, even though I just explained to you what that means. Further, it explains in verse 19 what it is. I've given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. If you're, in case you're a little confused, you know what that means, that's okay, at one time I was. Uh, what that means is the, we have authority in our words through the shed blood of Yeshua, and the cross of Calvary. So, as a partnership, as God has made this through prayer and working in the earth, when we use our authority, what that is saying is heaven will back it up, the Holy Spirit will come, the armies of heaven have come, the angels will be loosed to back up what you're binding that should be biblical in the earth. Whether it's sickness, pain, death, poverty, evil, whatever that's not, of the kingdom of heaven. What this is saying is heaven will back it up, heaven will follow your words, and whatever you're loosening, like healing, health, blessing, multiplication, prosperity, goodness, whatever that is originated from the kingdom of heaven, heaven will back it up what you're saying and speaking and will bring it in to the earth. That's what that's saying. But, this scripture is even more clear that we have power to destroy and close the gates of hell. As I'm already at my 30 minute mark, I'm gonna try to wrap this up and I'm gonna actually say a sample prayer that you can change however you want. This is just a template, just a sample to show you how you have authority to pray. And before I do that, I'm just going to show you the book once again. If you want to buy it, a lot of what I, not everything, but a lot of what I taught will have even further clarity of this book, Closing the Gates of Hell by Dale Sides, who operates out of Liberating Ministries in the East Coast. And if you, um, if you uh, Google that, uh, you'll be able to find his ministry, and find this book, highly suggested very inexpensive however I didn't buy it off his website because he only had electronic books I bought it off Arsenal books
I get nothing from what I said. I'm just suggesting buying this book and you're going to see more as I'm teaching in this spiritual warfare to try a spiritual warfare topic to equip the body of Christ. So now that you have the Old and New Testament in context, what is a sample prayer that you can use? And this is just a sample. You can change this however you like because there's a lot of ways you could get creative. Let the Holy Spirit be creative through you because you know what? The Holy Spirit beyond the Bible has... He, he is the commander-in-chief with the Father and Yeshua. He will show us how to make annunciation and proclamation through words. And this is just a sample prayer of what you can pray over your life. You can bring this into the neighborhood, into the city, over your government, over politics, education, uh, health, your finances, anything. Don't be afraid to be creative and let the Holy Spirit create through you because if you do, eventually you'll be able to line it up with Scripture and realize what God is doing through you. But here's a sample prayer that I'm actually going to pray over everyone right now under the sound of my voice. However, it is just an example sample. You're more than welcome to change this and you will see interesting insights if you were to get this book um, also of how I'm doing this. But Father, I just pray right now for all of the children that you are le people uh, and even those who don't know you, those who know you and those who don't know you. I just pray this prayer of closing the gates of hell and darkness uh, under everyone under my voice that is called to watch and listen to this video, uh, if not now, later. And Father, I pray that these gates would be closed over their lives and the kingdom of heaven, the windows of heaven, would be opened over their lives. Right now, Heavenly Father, I curse, damn, and shut the gates of hell assigned against these people's lives. And if that's too strong for you, you could take out curse, shut. I'm going to explain that at a later video uh, because we're not sending this against people, but the forces of hell when we know they're already cursed. So we're in line with what God has done already. But if you don't like that, it's too harsh, you could take that curse word out. But um, Father, I just right now curse, damn, and shut the portals and gates of hell against all of those watching this video, their lives, their family, their health, their ministries, their destinies, and their finances. May all of the entrances of the devil that is leading to the pits of hell and darkness, decay, death, and evil be closed and shut by the rock of ages and sealed shut never to reopen by the shed blood of Yeshua. And I replace and decree and ask that the portals and gates of heaven would be opened in replacement of the gates of hell that are being shut. May the windows and the portals and gates of heaven be opened in replacement in every department of their lives, their neighborhoods, their families, the atmosphere, the air, the water, the ground, all timelines, dimensions that relates into their lives. And I send the glory light of God, Elohim, Yahuwah, and the angels of heaven to accomplish and do this now in my life and their lives and everyone watching and listening to this video. And in Yeshua's name, which is key, we pray. You don't say these prayers unless it's in the authority, the signet ring that we were given at the cross of Calvary. In Yeshua's name, we pray these things and through his shed blood at the cross of Calvary. And I pray that this video uh, and these teachings from the New Testament of Jeremiah 1 and, and Matthew 16 um, is a big blessing to you. I pray that this will lead to not only pushing back and uprooting the kingdom of darkness in your life, but the loosening of blessings and kingdoms and stubborn situations that you've had. There's going to be more videos um, 
in this series of spiritual warfare and I'm going to show you different books that are in line from the same author and I think you're going to be highly blessed and highly liberated um, even if you understand this or you don't feel free to share this with your friends and family father I just seal this in prayer once again may these words not come back void it says you've given us power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all not some all of the power of the enemy in the book of Luke and probably another spot or two or other places father bless your people release the kingdom of heaven to manifest on earth as it is in heaven to fulfill their ministries their destinies close the gates of hell open the gates of heaven and may they receive the honey and the water out of the rock for your pleasure and goodness to bless your people and according to what you purchased at the cross of Calvary. I pray that is a blessing to you. May you and your family be blessed uh, greatly uh, in this time and seasons of what we're going through. And uh, I'm glad to be back with you again to be able to share another message. Until next time, have a great week. Take care.